What is going on Diablo 2 fans, Dobrinsky here and today I'm going to be covering the highest damage per second Frenzy Barbarian build that you can make. Now in my opinion this is a very underrated melee build and I've had a lot of requests to make a geared up build video for this character and also to explain the weapon swing bugs so today you guys are in luck because that is everything I'm going to cover. Like all of my previous build videos timestamps will be in the description below so if you guys want to bounce back and forth between specific segments of the video they didn't forget it's to you so please take advantage of them. And also a quick reminder for those that don't know, I do stream it twice a week on Twitch. So if you guys enjoy my YouTube content, I would love some support over on that platform. Link for my channel is of course in the description below. Twitch last to 125 a whole whack load of falls would be very much appreciated. But guys, I hope you enjoy this video. Let's jump in. So I want to briefly kind of jump into some of the pros and cons for the Frenzy Barbarian before we break down the specifics of my setup. And the first major pro is movement speed. This character, if you're not using Enigma, you can kind of just get around with insane faster run walk speed. And it's a build that you can just get away with not having teleport. It's very cool. The movement speed is amazing. You can just fly through the level and it's one of the few builds that for those that just love the teleport of Enigma, you can kind of just get away with it. It's really kind of hard to explain until you actually play the build. Movement speed is just absolutely incredible. The second is that the build has amazing survivability depending on how you want to set up your gear. So I'm going for the max damage per setup build so I will not have amazing survivability but if you want to go max vitality and then use a grief slash last wish combo you have fade proc, life tap and it's just with the rate of your attack speed and replenishing your life with the life tap curse you just have amazing survivability and the third major pro is that you can take advantage of the weapon swing bug to use interesting weapon combos like grief and death. Now, I am going to explain the weapon swing bug. It is a little complicated, but does have its own pluses and kind of negatives. But the weapon swing bug is definitely a big pro for the Frenzy Barbarian. But like all builds, there's definitely some cons associated with the Frenzy Barbarian. And the first being the weapon swing bug. Now, I know what you're thinking. You s just said, dude, the weapon swing bug is a pro. It is in certain scenarios, but in other scenarios it can be kind of annoying. So basically, max strength builds or max DPS, which I'm going to be showing off today, it is a little bit annoying to use the weapon swing bug. But if you're okay with not having a max strength setup and going max vitality, you don't really need to worry about the kind of cumbersome use of weapon swing bug. But it can be definitely a con because it just makes max strength builds more annoying. Again, I'm going to explain this in a little bit. The second major con is that the Barbarian, or Frenzy Barb, just lacks AoE. Just single target, swinging like crazy, running around, you have no AoE. Not that really melee builds have AoE in general, but the Whirlwind Barbarian, compared to Frenzy, there's just a massive difference in area effect damage. And the final kind of con is if you don't use Enigma, you're running around super fast, so that's great for getting to specific areas. The movement speed is a nice bonus. But if you want your Merc to proc like Decrepify and you're flying across the map, he's going to be miles behind you and you don't have an effective way of repositioning him to get that curse to be proc'd immediately. So the movement speed is great, but it can also be a con because Mercenary AI, if you don't have teleport and you're just running around super fast, he's going to be way off in the middle of nowhere doing absolutely nothing and is definitely a major con for the Frenzy Barbarian. So the next thing that I want to do is cover the weapon swing bug, but I want to be clear, I'm not going to explain the mechanics of how it works. I'm just going to cover how to execute it. It's very complicated, but I do have a friend's video linked in the description below, a YouTuber named Sictoid. He explains the mechanics in great detail of how it works. So for those that want to kind of broaden their Diablo 2 knowledge, I highly recommend you guys check out that video. But I'm just going to show you guys how to execute it. It's very, very simple, three steps. But just for reference, this is the standard setup, not weapon swing bug. I have grief on the main hand. When I'm referring to main hand, it is the weapon slot above the gloves. And then I have death in the off hand, and that's the weapon slot above the boots. So grief, main hand, phase blade, death, off hand, colossus blade. This is what your standard attack speed is going to look like. So it's pretty slow. Obviously, it's going to ramp up faster with more successive frenzy hits. But if we want to take advantage of the weapon swing bug, we want that ramp up speed to be immediate. So how you accomplish this, again, three simple steps, is to take your slow weapon, put it on the main hand, take your fast weapon, put it on the off hand, and then unequip and re-equip your slow weapon. So you are now frenzy or weapon swing bugs. So you'll notice a huge difference in frenzy. 
that initial ramp up is a lot faster and it allows you to take advantage of weapons like death. Now, it's very important to showcase here. You want to make sure that your strength is below, or sorry, you want to make sure that your strength is not higher than the maximum requirement on the slow handed weapon. So for death and a Colossus Blade, I have 142 strength. Now, why do you want to worry about this? Well, if we switch to the offhand, buff, go back to the main hand, we're still weapon swing bugged. But this is with the amount of strength that is the maximum, or sorry, the requirement to equip death for my setup. But now I have a max strength setup, so this is what I'm going to be using for the full DPS setup. Now, you'll see that I am currently weapon swing bugged. But what happens is if I switch to buff, go back to the main hand, you're going to start attacking slow again. So this is with 510 strength instead of the 142. Now to avoid this, all you need to do is to unequip and re-equip again. And the weapon swing is back. It's just every single time you want to switch to the offhand to buff up with battle orders, battle command, and shout, you're going to have to re-equip death just to get that weapon swing bug back. But if you keep your strength at the requirement to equip to death, or whatever your slow weapon you're using, then every time you switch back and forth to the offhand and the main hand, you won't have to reset your weapon swing bug. So that's when I was kind of referring to the con of the weapon swing bug. It works great on max vitality setups, but for this max DPS 510 strength barbarian, it's a little bit annoying because every time that I buff, I gotta go back to the main hand, unequip and re-equip death, and then set frenzy again to make sure that I am weapon swing bugged correctly. So with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at some of the specifics for my Frenzy Barb setup. So starting off with the attributes, again, I wanted to go max DPS. So I have every single extra point put into strength, 510. That's just to get the most that I can out of Frenzy. This damage value might look a little bit low, but remember that every single hit when I go over the gear is double damage. It's 100% deadly strike. Regardless, there's no like 70%. Every single hit is double the damage. Now, obviously, that number will be buffed up a lot once my Mercenary's Might Aura takes into place. And you could potentially boost it a little bit further with Pride, but I'm using a Reaper's Toll Mercenary for that Decrep proc. Although, again, tying back to that horrible Mercenary AI, Pride might be a viable choice for you if you just don't want to deal with the stupid Mercenary. But for Dexterity, just enough to equip my gear, which is the Phase Blade, so 136. A little bit higher here, 139. It's close enough. Vitality, nothing. I have 1359 life before Battle Orders, and I think I'm just over 2k, so it's a pretty low life setup. And then nothing in energy for 332 points into mana, and I have 75 fire res, 59 cold res, 80 lightning res, and 46 poison res, so that's a pretty good resistance split. Again, I am using Fortitude with this Barbarian, so Enigma, I would probably have to make some alterations to get a little bit better resistance score. So the skill tree is pretty generic, although I kind of modified the war cries a little bit, just again for max damage, but starting off with the combat mastery skill tree, I completely maxed out sword mastery for more damage attack rating. Uh, critical strike doesn't matter because I already have 100% deadly strike, but again, more damage and attack rating. One hard point into increased stamina, one hard point into increased speed, one hard point in iron skin, and then one hard point into natural resistance. And then for combat skills, I have one into Bash, one into Stun, one into Concentrate, and then one into Berserk. This is for Physical Immunes. If you really want to, you could not invest a point in a Berserk and just rely on Decrep from a Mercenary to break the majority of immunities. But Berserk will handle everything. Decrep will break most, but Berserk's just a nice kind of 1-point wonder. And then a completely max Double Swing. This is a synergy for Frenzy. One hard point into Double Swing. And then a completely maxed Frenzy, so at level 25, with all of its synergies, it's 530% damage, 268% attack rating, 7 to 44% attack speed, and then 47 to 178% faster Romox speed. Again, tying into that amazing movement that I talked about as a pro. And then lastly, taking a look at the Warcry skill tree, I invested them in this order. So one hard pointed to Howl, one hard pointed to Shout, one hard pointed to Battle Orders, one hard pointed to Battle Command, then it completely maxed out Taunt because Taunt is a synergy to Frenzy. And then all of my leftover points I put into battle orders. If you wanted more plus life, you could max out battle orders and then have like 18 skill points into taunt for a little bit less frenzy damage. But again, sticking with that theme of max DPS build, I wanted to max taunt just because frenzy gets 8% damage per level 
for every single point that's put into the skill taunt. So for the gear, you guys are probably going to notice a lot of similar gear items to the previous video that I have on my channel, the Max DPS Fury Druid. That is because a lot of the top tier melee build items, they're just the same for every single build. But there are a few unique items that I'm going to showcase. But starting off with the gloves, using laying hands for the 200, excuse me, 350 ED to demons and fire res. Then I have death on my main hand. So this isn't a Colossus blade. It's one of the coolest room words I think that I have on my pluggy grail because a lot of people typically just jump straight to a Colossus sword because it's guaranteed five open sockets from Larzac. I just think Colossus blade looks cooler. It's harder to roll five open sockets. Now this is not the best ED roll. But Death is an amazing rune word. The indestructible mod, so it works in F bases, bonus to attack rating, mana leech, 50 crushing blow, almost 50% deadly strike. It's just a very powerful rune word. And then for my first ring, I have a minimum damage, attack rating, life stolen number hit, strength, life, quad res, blood ring. This is a really cool ring, and you don't need to worry about mana leech because you get mana leech with death. Your kind of required dual leech ring for melee builds is. A little bit different here because death already has mana leech from that vex rune then of course i have string of ears for life stone overhead and damage reduction a raven frost for cannot be frozen gore riders for crushing blow deadly strike and open wounds and then on the offhand i have grief this is not the best grief it's a 40 is 369 damage i've never been really lucky but this is the single most powerful rune word in the game but the argument of Dual Grief Frenzy Barb versus this setup, they're almost the same. Dual Grief might be a hair better, but let's be honest, it's cool using something other than Grief. So that's why I have the Weapon Swing Bugged Death Grief combo. And then of course I have High Lords. And then G-Face with a ED to Demons attack rating, uh, st excuse me, Dexterity Fire Res Jewel. So between the Deadly Strike on Death, the Deadly Strike on G-Face, the Deadly Strike on High Lords, and the Deadly Strike on Gore Riders, Every single hit from death is 100% deadly strike, and then I also have 100% crushing blow, again from the same setup, so Gore Riders, G-Face, and death. Every single hit from that weapon is 100% crushing blow, 100% deadly strike, so it's a very, very cool, powerful build setup. And the offhand, I just have two Hodos, that is just to boost my battle orders to get a little bit more plus life. And then for the inventory, I have my very best Max damage, attack rating, plus life, grand charms, small charms, and then I have a barbarian torch and an anti charm. I could get rid of this cube if I really wanted to. I just carry some town portals here and full rejuves. But that is all of my barbarian's gear for this setup. And then for my mercenary, I'm just using a nightmare offensive merc for that might aura. And then he has a reaper's toll with a ruby jewel fervor. A chammed uh, V gaze, so damage reduction, dual leech, and then fortitude for damage, defense, and survivability. Just a good setup here that procs the crep when he's around, and then just fortitude for more damage, and then V gaze just for a little bit of uh, dual leech, and then his damage reduction and cannot be frozen. So it's kind of just a decent setup. And I will actually showcase part of a run using the room word pride. So the advantages and disadvantages of pride. You'll get that support aura, concentration from a mercenary off being dumb, but you do lose some damage from when that decrep proc. So it depends on the monster spawn. If there's like a big monster pack that you're solely working through, your mercenary will come up behind and actually support you. If you're on a lower difficulty setting or running around like crazy, mercenary is miles behind you and you might want to take advantage of the rumored pride. So to showcase the build, I'm going to do a player's three chaos sanctuary run and then a player's eight pit run. The pit run will be with a pride mercenary take advantage of the concentration aura when he's miles behind me and then players three when i get bogged down into some large monster groups the mercenary will help support with decrepify and i know what you guys are going to say how come you're not on players eight why players three it's very challenging to really showcase the true potential of a melee build in an area like chaos sanctuary decrep is just so crippling i'm not leeching back off of the undead so players three in my opinion is just a little bit better representation of the frenzy environment than chaos sanctuary so let's just start the run, go on the offhand here, buff up. Now, when we go back to the main hand, I have to unequip, re-equip, and then go back to Frenzy to make sure that we are on our weapon swing bug setup. So it takes a little while for the Merc to show up and get caught up. Again, kind of 
showing that or leading towards that argument that I was talking about, about how I really think that pride does have a viable use in some scenarios like a fury druid or frenzy barb where you can't really reposition your mercenary or your mercenary is just miles behind. Everything is pretty much dead before he gets that chance to proc that aura, right? So using concentration or getting using pride to get that concentration aura and then just using berserk for physical immunes, I think you can argue is a better case scenario for this barb. Like, yes, you get more damage with the crep, but I think I'm showcasing here that the majority of the time I'm killing stuff before I get a chance for the crap to proc, or the mercenary is just off, you know, doing whatever. I get bogged down in big packs here. Uh, the guy's stone skin, so this berserk. I am and you get bogged down in big packs, mercenary gets a chance to get caught up and proc that aura, but. Or proc that curse, excuse me. I think you really get to see the lack of AoE hurting this build as well. I think we're not really struggling with any single target monsters. It's just as soon as we get into big packs, we get kind of bogged down. And it just about did that whole monster spawn without that decrep curse going off. Again, I think showing that uh, pride is a decent weapon choice. I'm actually going to put on put on pride just just for comparison here. I did boost my damage up to 4k to 11k. Now there is the argument you could use Enigma to reposition the mercenary. But since I'm trying to go for a max DPS setup... Took a little bit of damage there. Since I'm trying to go for a max DPS setup, Fortitude and 510 points of strength is a better that up and using Enigma, in my opinion. It's only marginally better though, which is kind of crazy, just because of the extra strength that you get from Enigma. There's that Decrep Curse, just really slowing us down. So the reason why I really didn't want to do this on Players 8 is just reducing my attack speed and also reducing my damage output in half is pretty, pretty rough for this character. Last seal boss. Now let's take out Diablo and then we'll do a Players 8 pit run. Not even death can save you from me. It's Diablo. And let's go players eight. Hit run. We're trying to make melee great again, guys. We're trying to make melee great again. Never gonna quite match your poison necro, but we're doing the best. So this is nice because there's no crippling, super crippling curse. 
max DPS. We were 4k to 11k on each successive swing from death. And we also have 100% crushing blow and 100% deadly strike. So it's actually 8,000 to 22,000 per frenzy hit. Plus the extra damage from grief. Let's do at level two. Almost would want to switch and use a different set of gloves for the undead in this in the pits. I am overburdened. There you go, guys. That is an example of the max DPS that I could get with my gear set up for a frenzy barbarian weapon swing bug with death and grief. Well, guys, there you have it. That wraps up today's video. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it, and this video possibly has inspired you to try out a frenzy barbarian if you've never played the build before. A lot of fun. Great movement speed, pretty good single target damage, uh, although very poor AoE, but at least you can take advantage of the weapon swing bug and use some interesting weapon combos. But as always, if you guys could throw a like on this video, share it, and even consider subscribing if you're new to my channel. I post new weekly content on YouTube, and I do stream twice a week on Twitch, so any follows on Twitch or subs to YouTube would be amazing. Other than that, guys, hope you have a fan-frickin-tastic day, and I'll catch you on my next video or live stream. Peace out.